I've joked in the past where some people have a sweet tooth. I have 32 sweet teeth, but it's not really a joke. I actually do have that. I love cookies. I love ice cream. I love candy. You name it. But when I'm cutting in on a calorie deficit, those foods become harder to incorporate. So I need to get creative to get my sugar fix. Enter the protein cheesecake. There's about 125 grams of protein and only three grams of fat in this entire cheesecake. Now let's make it. To make this, you'll need either a nine inch pie pan or a nine inch springform pan. I've always used a pie pan in the past, but traditionally cheesecakes are made in a springform pan. So I bought one solely to make this video. So if it doesn't come out looking nice, somebody's gonna have hell to pay. First things first, we need to make our crust. So to a bowl, add half of a scoop or 17 grams of vanilla whey protein powder, half of a scoop or 17 grams of vanilla casein protein powder, one and a half tablespoons or 13 grams of cornstarch, one fourth of a cup or 27 grams of oat flour, and then one fourth of a teaspoon or one gram of baking powder. Mix that up until it's well combined. This is the same thing as the TMPM protein pancake mix. So if you have that on hand, you can just use 75 grams of it and save yourself some measuring. I use this for the crust to help bump up the protein and because I always have it in the house. I batch prep this pancake mix to use for pancakes and some of my other recipes, but if you don't wanna throw all of these ingredients together just for a cheesecake, I get it. You could probably just use regular flour or pancake mix with a bit of sweetener and it will still turn out well. Once all the dry ingredients are well combined, add in one half of a cup or 113 grams of unsweetened applesauce to form a dough. Keep in mind that this is a macro-friendly cheesecake, so this crust is more pie-like than a traditional fatty cheesecake crust. I'll be cooking this cheesecake using a water bath, and because the springform pan isn't waterproof, I need to make it that way. So I'm going to wrap it in a couple layers of aluminum foil to help keep the water from entering the pan and making cheesecake soup. Once you feel that your pan has become sufficiently waterproofed, you can spray the inside with a bit of oil and then add in your dough to form the crust. Spread the dough out across the base of the pan in an even layer. Sometimes it can be hard because it just slides around on top of the oil, but I find that if you wet your fingers and press it lightly into the bottom, it will help to fill in any gaps. When I use a pie pan to make this, I like to paint the dough up the sides a bit as well. You're gonna par bake this crust in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit or 177 Celsius for five to 10 minutes or until it no longer looks wet on top. While that's going in the oven, you can prepare your cheesecake filling. To a large bowl, add three cups or 681 grams of plain non-fat Greek yogurt, three fourths of a cup plus one tablespoon or 200 grams of egg whites or about three whole eggs, two teaspoons or eight grams of Splenda, and then one packet or 28 grams of sugar-free vanilla pudding mix. The pudding mix is what helps give us the right consistency, so it's not really substitutable here. The sugar-free mix is used to save on calories, but I think it might be tough to find right now because of supply chain issues, so if all you can find is the regular stuff, that's a fine substitute. Mix all of your ingredients together until everything is smooth, and your crust should be about ready to go now. Pull it out of the oven and dump your cheesecake filling into the center. Spread that cheesecake filling around in the pan into an even layer. You don't want this to be domed in the center because that will make it cook unevenly. So take your time and make sure you do it right to get it even. In the past when I made these cheesecakes, I have never used a water bath to cook them. The water bath helps make them less prone to cracking, but I don't really care if it cracks because I'm not winning any awards with a cheesecake made of yogurt and I'm covering it with toppings anyway. But if I don't use a water bath, there's gonna be a million people in the comments telling me that I need to use one and I don't wanna deal with that. So here's your fracking water bath. For the water bath, all you need to do is place that cheesecake into a larger baking dish and then pour about a half an inch to an inch of boiling water around it. Then throw it in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit or 177 Celsius for 30 to 40 minutes. In my experience, if you use the water bath, it's gonna take a little bit longer because it's not gonna get as hot since the water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. In the past, when I made this without the water bath, it takes right around 30 minutes. This time, it took 40. Once it has finished baking, pull it from the oven and set it on the counter to cool. When it's cool enough to handle, you can pull off the foil and then move it into the fridge for at least three hours or overnight if you can wait. About 15 minutes before you're ready to eat, you can prepare your strawberry topping. This is one and a half cups or 200 grams of frozen strawberries that I thawed out in the microwave and then added about a half a teaspoon or two grams of Splenda to help them macerate. Normally, I would recommend storing the strawberries and the cheesecake separately and then cutting out and topping the pieces individually. However, because this is for a video and I want it to look aesthetically pleasing, you get to watch me try and decorate this cheesecake like I'm the goddamn cake boss. Food styling is not my thing. I don't like it. I don't think it's fun. It's one of my least favorite parts of the job. So I just dumped the strawberries into the center and made a ring of whipped cream around the edges. For the record, for nutritional purposes, I'm including one cup or 64 grams of fat-free ready whip and the final recipe for the nutrition counts. If you cut this cheesecake into eight slices, each slice has about 136 calories and 15.6 grams of protein. For a macro-friendly dessert, I'd say those are pretty solid numbers. It is what it is though. It's a lower calorie version of a cheesecake. If you're expecting this to taste exactly like one of the 1300 calorie pieces of cheesecake from the Cheesecake Factory, 
drop your expectations a bit. This has a tenth of the calories. Plus, the cheesecake factory is for people who are in loveless marriages. You don't want to eat that cheesecake anyway. With all of that being said, I do think that for a 136 calorie dessert, it's still quite enjoyable. And this recipe currently has 4.85 out of 5 stars on my website, so it seems that others tend to agree with me. The fruit and the whipped cream really helped to make it good. My roommate Kathy used to beg me to make these so that she could have an excuse to eat a criminal amount of the whipped cream. The cheesecake itself should last up to 5-7 to seven days in the fridge as long as you don't top it so that nothing gets too soggy. The fruit doesn't hold up as well, probably only 2-3 to three days, so if your cheesecake lasts longer than that amount of time, I would recommend making the fruit on an as needed basis after that. The written version for this macro friendly protein cheesecake is linked in the description of this video below on my website. Go and check it out there. See you next week.